Alright, ready? Yep. There he goes. Alright, I gotta wash my hands. Lots of uh, barracuda smell. Meet Lab Mariner, our home in the water, and her crew. Anubis, the Huntress. Jim, the Captain. Mocha, the Camera Dog. Nuala, the Greeter. And Stephanie, the Cruise Director. Good morning, sir. This is Dragonfly over here. Let me outside. Dragonfly, okay, thank you. Please. Thank you very much. You gonna call Dragonfly in range? Order? Uh, I'm not sure if, if that's getting in front of the uh, bridge tender. Uh, 17th Street Bridge Master, we are new around here. Do you direct which traffic goes through or do we arrange between boats? Peterson Fuel, I'm trying to come through first, make it sure. Okay, Yep, Roger that, keep it coming. Good morning. Captain, I'm I'm just going to go. Lip it, Cameron. Please proceed. I will follow after you. Over. Thank you, Dragonfly. Grab the make it to the clear, thanks. Thank you, Sunrise Boulevard. Have a great day. Be the cutting edge. Stand by. Uh, Captain asking who goes first. Uh, that's actually up to the two captains. If there's enough room, you can both do it. But uh, if you need to make sure only one goes through at a time, then you discuss that amongst yourselves. Thank you, sir. We did. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Andrews Avenue, this is the uh, inbound state vessel, the Naked Truth. I will be stopping short at the downtown or not. Thank you very much, sir. Have a good day. Caution, caution. 17th Street Bridge stands are now roaring. Thank you, 17th Street Bridge. Lab Mariner back to 1 6. You're welcome, Captain. Drive safe. Goodbye, Fort Lauderdale. On to Key Biscayne for the day. For Fort Lauderdale, we head south 33 nautical miles to Key Biscayne. We've chosen Key Biscayne as our starting point for Gulfstream Crossing because it is at a similar latitude to our end destination, North Bimini in the Bahamas. What you doing, Jim? <laughs> I am uh, trying to recall how I troll. Uh, we're just going to play around and try to fish. I like things simple. The best way is rolling line. When you catch it, all you do is kind of drag it on. It's all you do is hand over hand pulling in, but you don't have the rod to deal with. And this is so easy to put a leg on, on and off. There it goes. There it is. To see the uh, very expensive uh, uh, additional equipment I bought. It's really cool. Hold on. Oh no. Hold on. It costs five cents. <laughs> Hear that? Wait a minute. That is your alarm system. There you go. There's the five cents. I think last time I didn't have enough pennies, so that one maybe would cost one cent. It. it pulls this out, makes the very expensive alarm system. So I know I have a fish. And what it does is also sets the hook because this is a bungee. And so it stretches way out until the actual nylon line holds it back in. And then it sets the hook and then I go and pull it in. Easy. Easy. Barracuda. Uh, what do you do with a 
There he goes. All right, I gotta wash my hands. Lots of uh, barracuda smell. As we continue south, we encounter a lot of commercial traffic. Cruise ships, cargo ships, tugboats. We pass the Cape Florida light as we head into anchor for the night. The lights of Key Biscayne illuminate the night to the west and north of our anchorage. We leave Key Biscayne early in the morning for our 46 nautical mile Gulfstream crossing to North Bimini. The Gulfstream begins a few miles from the Florida coast and extends for about 43 nautical miles eastward with the precise location changing from day to day. The current gradually decreases as you travel east with the current at a maximum of approximately 3 knots, about 8 to 11 nautical miles from the western side, to little to no current at the eastern side. There are several factors to consider when planning a Gulfstream crossing. Firstly, you should not cross when there is a strong wind with a northern component. A northern component causes the waves to build higher than they normally would as they meet the north moving Gulf Stream and they will be steeper and almost square in shape. The best time to cross is with a wind less than 15 knots with a southern component. Secondly, the warm water coming from the Caribbean can affect the weather in the Gulf Stream and if it meets a cold weather system can cause lightning, thunderstorms, heavy rain, and strong winds. And thirdly, there is a lot of commercial traffic traveling north and south along the Gulf Stream, which has to be avoided. We are now in the Gulf Stream. The blue line is the direction that our vessel is making. So the blue line is our course over ground, and the black line is uh, showing where the boat is actually pointing toward. So in other words, even though we're pointing toward the black line, we're actually advancing about 25 degrees to the port or to the left. And the reason why we're pointing 25 to 30 degrees different from where our course over ground is, is because we're in the Gulf Stream. We're right now doing about seven to nine knots uh, course over ground, but the Gulf Stream is roughly three nautical miles going from our right to our left. So literally, in order to compensate for that conveyor belt of water underneath us that keeps pushing us to the left, we have to actually keep pointing to the right or the starboard side and uh, match our speed with the course of the water speed. So as long as we're in the Gulf Stream, our blue and black lines will be about 20 to 30 degrees apart. As soon as we get out of the Gulf Stream, all of a sudden, the blue and the black line will start lining up again because we're no longer being pushed from right to left by about three nautical miles per hour. So what expect, time did we get up this morning? We got up at 3.20 this morning. It took about 30 minutes to get the dogs fed and relieved and re-bedded because they like to sleep after they eat in the morning. Got the boat ready. The weather reports had the weather building. We were expecting about six to eight knots of wind, but when I looked at the weather report this morning, it was 10 to 11 knots of wind. Got out into the open water, 40 nautical mile crossing from Key Biscayne area over to Bimini. We put up our sails and we quickly found out that the true wind, meaning the wind blowing by without us moving, was probably more like 17 to 22 knots. And it was unfortunately coming out of the north. And if there is one specific direction that everybody warns crossing the Gulf Stream over to the Bahamas, it is going in a northerly wind that's in excess of eight knots. So we ventured out. We have a number of reasons why we felt comfortable about it. It's been a little bit bigger seas than we expected, about four foot swells every two to three seconds, which is quite reasonable for this vessel. So how fast are we going? We're basically consistent going between seven and a half and eight knots for the last hour and a half between full water full diesel full gas full pantry and full scuba we have never ever been this heavy and to go eight knots with us being this heavy probably says that our flexifold props 
have really, really slicked this out. We have foldable props. One of the people that talked uh, to me about getting some folding props, and he's like, so take a big bucket, tie a, a line on it, and th throw it off the back of your boat. And that's how much drag is dragging your boat because the props that we had, the propellers that is, uh, were fixed. And they don't, when you're sailing, they just sit there. And so the water is trying to pass by it. It's like a big parachute that's about 15 inches wide. But now we have these flexifold, which basically fold down so that they're like a torpedo when we're not using them. So all that drag is gone. And believe it or not, it actually adds anywhere from a half to a full knot of feed to your vessel. And uh, that's quite a lot when your average boat speed is five to eight knots, usually. You can see we're now out of the Gulf Stream because the blue line and the black line are pretty much matching up. So we no longer have that current that's pushing us laterally. Six hours and 46 nautical miles later, we note that the water has changed from a dark blue color to a blue color and now is a beautiful turquoise color. And we realize that we have arrived in the Bahamas. We tie our boat up at the marina and then Jim the captain goes in to clear up customs and immigration. Join us next week when we visit the Dolphin House in North Bimini and then travel south in the Bimini Islands to snorkel a concrete ship. <laughs>